area around the church. And so they started serving food in the church fellowship hall. They invited the homeless to come in to share good food. The first act of being a disciple is to notice the stranger, offer an invitation, and share good food. The second act of the drama in the gospel, the stranger said yes, the stranger stayed. And so the disciples prepared a meal. They sat down at the table. They asked the stranger to pray over the meal, and he did. He took the bread. He gave thanks to God for the food. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples. And that's when it happened. When they looked up from that prayer at that stranger again, they saw that it was Jesus risen, alive, with them. A memorable day, a memorable meal. Generous sharing of food. Strangers welcome to the table. Since Kathleen has been the pastor at Centenary United Methodist Church, that program, that ministry of feeding the homeless has just grown and grown. Some of you may have given your time and your gifts to help in that ministry. I was there about a year ago and went in the fellowship hall and noticed that there were all new tables there. And Kathleen told me then that Manchester United Methodist Church provided all of those new tables. Every time I talk with her about it, Kathleen always says it's a God thing. The way food and people always show up when it's needed. Memorable meals at that church every day. In the third and final act of that gospel drama, the disciples are just beside themselves. The one they thought was a stranger turned out to be Jesus. And they were so amazed that they never stopped telling that story. We who are disciples in the 21st century are still telling that story. Now... All of the stories I've been telling today are really an invitation for you to think about your own stories. What are the memorable meals that you've shared in your life? And of course, there are those family meals, especially at holiday times that we remember. There may be wonderful meals that have been shared with good friends. But what about those memorable meals where a stranger has been invited to the meal where in the sharing of good food, the stranger becomes a friend, where maybe a tear or maybe laughter just kind of shows up out of no place because all of a sudden you realize that God is somehow present at that table in that meal. It's really true. God does indeed provide food, bread for the journey of life. And there's always enough, but not too much. The whole Bible proclaims that God's dream for all of God's creation is to have enough food, enough resources that are needed for life. But of course, I haven't told the whole story, have I? All of creation doesn't have enough. Children every day die of hunger. People who are our neighbors, as well as people that we will never meet, do not have enough resources for life. And so disciples like us buy tables so that the homeless can be served meals. Disciples like us go down to Centenary United Methodist Church and other places like that to help with those meals so people can have good food in a safe place. Disciples like us pay for wells to be dug in places like Mozambique so people can have good, clean, safe water to drink. Disciples like us, we hope, give over 12,000 items of food so that kids here in St. Louis can be fed. The most recent issue of the journal Christian Century had an article in it called Hunger is Political. It's written by a man named David Beckman, who is president of Bread for the World. 
Beckman says that from the 1970s to the mid-1990s, the amount of people, the number of people who go hungry, who are hungry, malnourished, actually declined. And then in the mid-90s, because of the global economic slowdown that we all know about, that number started climbing again. So that the number of people who are malnourished in the world in 2008-2009 count is over a billion people. Beckman writes in the article with gratitude for all the ways that people give to help. But he also calls for people of faith to work hand in hand with governments, not only to provide food through our charities, but to be active citizens, to stay in touch with elected officials about the ways that individuals and faith groups and governments can be partners in the search for systemic changes so that all people can have enough to eat. God's dream is that everybody should have enough food. That's kept in front of our eyes every time we come to the Lord's table. Today, especially, God's people around the world are gathering at God's table. This is a table where everybody's invited. The only requirement for coming to this table, my friends, is that you're breathing. So God has given us this table. This is a sacrament. This is a sign that points toward God's dream that all should have enough. It's one of those memorable meals. Everybody's welcome, strangers and family alike. There's enough food for all of us. Can't be hoarded. Nobody comes to the table and grabs more than their share. We all get a taste of what God's kingdom food is like. And so, whether it's the bush of Mozambique or it's the pastor's house in Hastings, Nebraska, or it's sharing food with the homeless at Centenary Church, or gathering on a beautiful Sunday morning like this. They're all memorable meals. They're all meals where the stranger is welcome to the table. They're all meals where there's a generous sharing of hospitality. We are called when we come to this table not to forget not to ever forget that we are being formed at this table. Our lives are to be modeled after, defined, shaped by the picture of God's dream that all should have enough so that when we leave this place, we are the people of God who generously share, who with hospitality invite the stranger to come to the table. We are never to forget that our lives are to be formed in that way so that when we go out from this place, we are truly God's people, a living sacrament of God's dream. Amen.